Are you looking for a no-code platform to build business apps? Let's discover NoCobase, a free open source no-code app builder. It comes with a visual editor to simply create pages with configurable blocks. What makes it different from the traditional platforms is its clear separation between the data model and the UI, and its plugin approach, which allows technical teams to develop custom plugins for specific needs, while the platform stay 100% no-code and not low-code. The community edition is free, while for white label and private code source project, the standard edition license costs $800. It's a one-time purchase. You can deploy it yourself by following the detailed installation guides in the documentation, or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy it on your server or the cloud provider of your choice, while we take care of the installation, backups, updates, and maintenance for you. To start using NoCobase on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, search for NoCobase and select. Choose between the different cloud providers. The last option is if you already have an existing server, you can use Elestio to deploy it into your own existing server. You can see it's free, but if you don't have one, do like me, I will stick to Hetzner, then you can adjust your region, service plan based on your needs, and then next. You can fine tune some more advanced settings and choose between different level of support. The first one is free and included by default. I will stick to this one, and once you are ready, create service. Service. Once the installation is ready, you will receive this email with the links to access your admin UI. Follow the click here to get the password link. Then copy the password to your clipboard with this button here and follow the admin UI link. Type in your email and paste uh, the password and then sign in. And voila, you arrive on NoCobase, an empty app. So it can seem empty, but it's quite easy to add components into it. What we will try to build is a simple customer feedback app. So first, what we will need to do is create pages. So let's switch to edit mode with the UI editor button here. And now we have the option to add a menu item to create our different pages or just link to different places. We will create a feedback form to get some customer reviews and then a place to display them. So first we need the form to have some data. So let's create a new page. We can enter the menu item title, which is what will appear in the menu. Let's say, leave a review. Then you can add an icon. You have this nice icon picker here. You can type different things. I search for edit and I have this pencil and then OK. We have our page created. We can click on it. By default, you will have the title and then we can add anything into our page with add block. There are different types of block that you can add. Table, form, details, list, grid, everything that is related to data and under different forms. But you also have other type of content just to display some information like markdown, iframe and so on. So what we want is to add a form, but we don't have the data yet about uh, the user reviews. So let's start with it. On the top right, you can have the cog, which is the main links to the different administration things from your NoCobase instance, and go to data sources. Automatically, when you create your instance, you have one database that is attached to it, but you can add also external databases. You can check the view documentation to know how to do it with installation and the different steps. But we already have one, so we just have to go to configure and inside you have the different collections, which are like tables. Automatically, you have one for the roles and users, which I guess enable access or not to our app and is automatically configured with the authentication features. But us, what we want is to create a new collection you have different type of collection based on what you are trying to achieve. I will stick to general collection as what we will do is pretty simple. Let's name it reviews. It generates a random ID, but we can write reviews. You have some different settings, some preset fields. If you want, I recommend you to keep them as it's something you almost always do on a database. A unique ID, the date it was created, updated and by who it was done then submit. Now we have our collection review available here. We need to add some fields to it. Think of them as column in a traditional table. So add field and you have 
different types of field to fill some data into your collections. For a review, what we will need a single line of text. We can display the full name. Field name, either we stick to the random IDs, but it's not easy to read. So I will just write everything in lowercase. We don't need it to be primary or unique. We just want some text, okay. Then another field. We will want a longer text, which would be the review itself. So review, I added a capital letter at the beginning, so we stick to it and submit. Then if we want to do like a star system, we could add an integer to have the score of the review. Auto increment, no, and submit. We could add other fields like the title or anything, but we will just add another interesting one, which will be an attachment to add a picture, a user picture of the review, which gives a better sense of trust. So picture, picture, MIME type, which allows you to define a rule to only accept certain type of attachment. By default, it's what we want, image slash star to allow all type of images, PNG, JPEG, and so on. Do we want to allow uploading multiple files? No and submit again. Okay, that should be fine. That should be a good starting point for our data. We can go back to our liver review form page and we can now add a form and automatically we have our new page, our new collection available here, so reviews. And what I really like about it is it's not field by field that you drag and drop them, but it's a whole form you add and then you choose the different fields that uh, the user can fill. So we want the user to enter everything we created, so not the default values, full name, the review, the score, and a picture. Then on each field, you can reorder them, so you can drag and drop if you want to put the review on top. I missed it. Here it is. So you can rearrange the different fields in the order you want. Then for each field, you have the three lines here to add some more settings. What we will want to do is to make it required. We want every review to have at least the full, full name, the score, and the review. We want to require a picture for every user, but we will have an issue because the score is an integer and we need to limit it to a certain range. So we can use the three bars again and then set validation rules. So currently they are known. We can add our first validation rule. So let's say maximum will be five, minimum will be one, then format and pattern, we don't mind. And error message, please enter a value between one and five. Okay, then if we want to give more explanation to our form, we can click on configure fields, add markdown. It's this field here, it's an invisible line. You can click on the three dots, edit markdown, and here you are able to edit it. Dear user, please leave us a review about your experience with Elestio. So because it's markdown, I'm able to use the markdown syntax. Save, let's see if it works. Yes, LSTO is in bold and we can move it on top of everything. So it should be here. Fine, we added this explanation. The last thing we need is to add an action. So to submit the form, it will automatically save the data. So to try it, you can just disable the UI editor mode and we will be on the app as a regular user. The only difference is the administration button on the top right, but the rest is the same. So full name, I will type mine. Then the score will leave it empty for now and we will just try to submit. So you can see the field value is required. Let's write a wrong one and we have please enter a value between one and five. So perfect. We are restricted. We'll say five we have. Great experience, thank you. And let's add a picture to see how it display later. Upload, 
open. It's uploaded. Let's try to submit. And we have the save successfully here. Before working on the detail pages, let's type another test one. The score will be two. It was a horrible nightmare. And submit. Perfect. Now we have those two reviews. Well, we trust that they are here in database. Let's switch to UI editor and create a new page. Let's name it user reviews icon. We would want a star and OK. Now navigate to this page we have for now. It's empty. We can add a table block with the different reviews. You can see we have the number one and two, which are the IDs created, but we need to select which columns we want to display. So here it depends if it is the administration panel, you would use a table and maybe uh, add more detail that it requires, like created at, last updated at, and everything. You can see the picture is displayed with a preview here. On the top right, you have this useful button, configure action. So you can add filters. You can allow to delete data or not, a refresh button. Perfect to create an administration panel very easily. You even have the bulk edit or the bulk update. Let's add one. You will see it's pretty funny. So what it does is it updates selected data. So we need to select the lines, bulk update. OK, and it's done. But first, we need to edit what it does. For example, assign field values. We will say the score. If we are very bad, very mean, we would say score of five. We select every one. So currently it's five and two. Bulk update. We run it. And everyone has a score of five. Don't do it. It's just a funny example. So this is it for the administration type. But if you want to display your user reviews, maybe on a website or on a more friendly way, you can use different type of blocks. For example, details, list, grid card. And I think this is this one we will use. We select our reviews. There's no sense to display the table on top, but it's just for demonstration purpose. And here you can see it create different cards. And again, you have to decide which column to display. So here, there's no sense to display the ID, maybe the date. So only full name, review, score, and picture. And automatically, you have your data. You can also reorder them, arrange it the way you like. To discover everything you can do, you can either explore by yourself, adding things, exploring the different settings with the three lines here, or the different action button you will, you will see along the way. Or because it is plugin based, you can head to plugin manager. And from here, you see all the different plugins that are enabled on your instance by default. So from here, you can disable ones that you don't want to use, or you can enable some that you might find useful for your use cases. You can see on the top, there is this marketplace that is coming soon, but I think it's a very exciting feature. So let's go back to local and let's try to add API documentation. So for now, you can see we don't have API documentation on our settings. So if we enable it, it will take a few seconds to install it. Now you can see it is enabled and what it does is it adds these settings as it is an admin feature with API documentation and automatically you can see all the different routes to connect with your Nocobase instance if you want to build an API or connect your existing backends to your instance. For all the different plugins, you can check the documentation to see how it works and what it does. Let's go back to the administration panel so you can open any of them. Then you have authentication to allow different type of authentication to your app. Maybe you want to disable it and make your app public. You can adjust the overall appearance of your project. Currently, I guess we have default or a compact theme. We can switch to compact dark. So let's say it's the default theme. But on top of that, we can do some addition. You can adjust the color. So currently it's the blue, the main color. We switch to the orange of Elestio. 
we can save it and automatically everything turned into orange. What is nice is it will automatically create the different variants based on your primary color. You can adjust more things such as the size, the style and others. And last but not least, don't forget to go to users and permission and invite your whole team. From there, you can define different roles and permission to know who has access to what. Admins could do everything, while some users should be only able to visualize data to avoid any kind of conflict or errors. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering NocoBase with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.